Zolan here from winterstrength.com. On this video, I'll be explaining why the SS Yoke Barbell should be the first specialty barbell you add to your garage gym. In episode one, which I'll link here, I went over why the Elite FTS SS Yoke Bar is the best SSB you can buy or that's available out on the market today. In episode two, today I'll be explaining why it should be the first specialty barbell you buy. Obviously, after you've purchased your nice uh, regular barbell. Um, now, originally the SSB was developed uh, for people with shoulder injuries and shoulder issues, hence the name safety squat. Uh, that came from the fact that you could move the shoulders in a safer position relative to the uh, typical back rack position. Um, you're able to keep the shoulders in a more forward position, which generally allows uh, more flexibility for people that do have some shoulder issues. Uh, I've noticed that for my own personal training when I do have some shoulder in injuries come up, it is a nice way to uh, alleviate some shoulder discomfort and pain for the rest of the program. Uh, that being said though, it's not just a good barbell for people that have shoulder issues. I think it's a great barbell for people that have no shoulder issues whatsoever. But to say that it's, it's a better alternative than a regular squat, a back squat, a front squat, a high bar back squat. Uh, I think that's missing the point. Um, it's not better, it's not worse, it's just a different tool, a different option you have in your arsenal in order to build a better body. Much like a hammer isn't better than a screwdriver unless you're trying to do, unless you're trying to screw in a screw. If I'm trying to hammer in a nail, then obviously I can't do that effectively with a screwdriver and vice versa. So to say one tool is better than the other is kind of a bit obtuse. So we need to look at the the whole picture here. A great toolkit is made up of lots of different tools. Um, any great carpenter knows that you can't just get by with one item. You, if you told a carpenter to pick one item, it'd be pretty difficult for them to do their job. So much like we're in the gym, we have different toolkits, tools available to us in order to achieve different things. Hence, the SSB is a great first specialty barbell after you've already obviously gotten your regular straight barbell, your regular power barbell, whatever that may be. And the reason I think it is the first specialty barbell you should buy is because it is uh, much more capable than a squat variant barbell. I think it helps build the entire body in different ways depending on how you want to use it. So you can use it to obviously build the squat, you can use it to build the deadlift, uh, build the your arms as well. You can use it to train with lunges. You can do all sorts of things that aren't just specific to the lower body, unlike some other specialty barbells out there. It's not upper or lower body specific and it's not movement specific either. You can change this up to do a lot of different varieties of movements, which is why I think it's a great first option for people that are looking to see what uh, barbell, what specialty barbell they should buy. Uh, however, do keep in mind that this is with uh, a powerlifting strongman focused mindset, I guess. Um, if you had different sports or different focuses, different interests with the way you train, this might not be the best barbell for you, uh, mainly because I'm looking, I'm interested in building up the squat, the deadlift, the bench, the overhead press, the big compound movements. I think this is a great barbell for that but if you're doing other things this might not be the one for you so keep that little piece in mind when I am explaining this to you this is for people that focus that are highly focused in developing their squat bench deadlift and overhead press I think this is a great barbell for those people uh, but if you, this isn't you then this probably isn't the right barbell for you so there is obviously a lot that separates this from a regular straight barbell obviously it looks different and that's a huge part of it uh, mainly the the biggest functional differences mainly come from obviously the handles and the camber of the weight so the handles give you obviously something to grip onto and the camber of the weight changes the way the weight acts when it's on your back or on your front or wherever you want to choose to hold this barbell um, generally the barbell generally a regular barbell has the weight where you grip it or where it sits um, whether it be on your back your chest in your hands on the front rack position, that weight, wherever wherever the barbell lies, the weight's gonna be there. When you start loading weight onto a, onto a SSB, the camber, when you look at the side, changes where the center of gravity is for the barbell and subsequently the center of gravity when you move. So when you do something as simple as like as a squat with the SSB, you're gonna notice that the weight is, is gonna to wanna to pull you forward because that's how the 
angle of that camber works. Um, and again, if you look at episode one, you notice that the SSB in particular has perfected, I think, the angle of both the handle and the camber to make a nice unit that fits most lifters quite well and is very much suitable for this type of lift. It's not um, something to keep out for. You don't want the angle and the camber to be in the same line. You want them to be offset. And the, this is the good example of how to offset that by a certain amount of degrees. Uh, when they start getting in line, it starts throwing the balance off and doesn't quite allow you to move in that natural of a position as if they're offset with that angle. And if we keep our focus with the squat in mind, um, the ability to move the camber as well is a great thing. So it's different from say a spider bar or a cambered bar where you're still holding it in that typical rack position on the back. The, the camber is fixed or the weight offset is fixed. Here, because you are controlling the handles, you can change the pitch and the angle of the weights on your back depending on how you want to push or pull the handles which allows you to target slightly different muscle groups again adding to that versatility of the SSB. So if you want to pull them into you um, that'll help with the upper back tightness so as you pull the weight in the weights lean further a little bit further back so they pull the weights in closer to your regular center of gravity um, but what that'll do is it'll give you something to pull against so you you're maintaining that upper back tightness if that's something you need to work on um, alternatively if you start pushing the handles up that'll pitch the weight a little bit more more forward uh, further away from that center of gravity pulling more weight a little bit more upwards forcing you to stay more upright in the position which could help uh, alleviate some uh, some shear forces from the lower back as well as teaching you to stay in a more upright position if that's something you want to train. So simply moving the handles up and down gives you another two different varieties of squat to target different muscles in the body. And then, and then we move on from there, we can even remove the handles and operate in hands-free in a hands-free squat style. So when we do that, we can either hold onto a barbell or some safety pins in the squat rack and create a Hatfield squat. Uh, one of my new favorite squat variations is the Hatfield squat. What that does is it allows you to add some assistance to the squat so you can overload the squat in a way so you can pull yourself up and get some momentum that way. Nice little overloading tool uh, to help drive up some weights. That way, um, if you do the hands-free version, it'll also uh, require increased core stability and shoulder stability as well because you're not having anything to grasp your hands with um, and that will help train different aspects of the squat as well so I mean just the fact that there are handles and an angle of the weight allows you to play with a lot of different possibilities for shifting the weight and targeting different muscle groups and addressing different weak points in your squat and deadlift because both of both of these movements both of the very, all the variations here are able to target different muscles that'll affect both the squat and the deadlift in a positive way. Oh, yeah. And after we take the handles off, we can now target uh, upper body movement. So we can obviously curl with the, uh, we can obviously do some curls with it. But when you take the handles off, you can also perform an assisted uh, JM press. This is a unique style skull crusher slash tricep extension slash close grip bench press. So you're kind of targeting slightly different muscle groups there, but it does allow you to get a little bit more of a uh, tricep focus and extend that range of motion so that you're engaging a bit more tricep activation in order to drive some more muscle gains. So now you've turned this lower body barbell into an upper body piece of equipment to help you bring up your bench press. So that's another great thing with the barbell. You're able to not only do the lower body but the upper body as well so it's quite versatile in that aspect uh, you can also leave the handles on there and then pull your grip all the way out to the angle on the end of the camber and that allow you to do somewhat of a cambered bar squat where now you're holding on to the the barbell itself from the from a almost regular back squat position so again targeting different muscle groups targeting different angles again nothing better or worse than other squat movements is just giving you more options and more versatility in your training in order to address any weak points that will start to show up along the way as you go down this progression of building the squat and the deadlift and if i go back to addressing the the camber of the barbell um, this is one of the cool things with this barbell obviously it's targeted towards building a squat so with that in mind that if you notice from the side, the 
the camber, what it does is if you just set everything up like usual, you have the regular, the regular position with the SSB squat and you squat up. As you squat up, the weight's trying to pull you forward. So what that's gonna do is force you to maintain a more rigid back and build some resilience to the weight pulling you forward. So what this is great for is if you tend to good morning your squats, if you have a back dominant squat or you have a weak back, both of those can easily be addressed by doing incorporating some more SSB squats because with that weight driving you forward, it's training your back to fight up against that weight um, so that when you do encounter a situation, obviously not ideal, but if you are trying to push those heavy weights, you'll probably encounter at some point or another a, a good morning squat where, the, where your hips shoot up a bit before your upper back does, so now you have to use more back in order to bring that weight up and stand up. Uh, and to complete the squat. So if you train a lot with the SSB, you're gonna be able to build up that back musculature and that movement pattern in order to stand up a little bit better in that compromised position. So obviously we don't wanna train to have this uh, weak point in our lift, but if we're training like usual and in a competition setting, the weight does pitch us forward we have some sort of training to rely upon and some muscle activation that we can rely upon in order to get out of that bad position and good morning the squat if necessary. And that's a great thing with the angle of this camber. It is a natural uh, weight. It is this natural angle that kind of helps promote that offset balance so that it does train you to fight against that offset balance again, building up that lower back and that musculature to fight that pulling you forward. And again, not just helpful for the squat, if we look at how we set up for a deadlift, the weight is in front of us on a deadlift, obviously, it's gonna be in front of our shins. Um, the fact that this is trying to pitch the weight forward from a squat, it turns the squat center of gravity very similar to a deadlift center of gravity. So by building this up, you're also helping to assist, it could be seen as an assistance to the deadlift as well. Um, now when we go into say an SSB good morning, very much more so, we're pitching that weight even more forward than with a regular barbell. Again, extending that stress to the lower back and pushing that center of gravity further away, adding some moments of angle, which means we're allowed to train different ways and add some more force in order to train to bring that deadlift up. So now we've got obviously a squat and a deadlift assistance movement in one. So it's a great tool for that. And I know I've gone over it. I know that that's what I've been talking about for the last couple of minutes here, but to say that this barber will help bring up your squat and deadlift is a bit too simplistic in nature. Again, I think it's there to help assist your squat and deadlift, but I don't think it's going to attribute to new, new PRs and new... It's not going to help you directly get a new PR in the squat or the deadlift. I think it's going to help you bring up some weaknesses. Obviously, you can still keep hitting PRs with a regular barbell, but this just gives you more options in order to build up weak points directly rather than kind of address them with different barbell movements. Obviously, if I wanted to focus more on keeping an upright back position and hammering in on my quads, I can do a front rack position. I can just do a front squat. Uh, if I wanted to obviously target some more lower back posterior chain, I could potentially drop from a high bar back position to a low bar back position and start working on good mornings, uh, low and, and just regular low bar back squats, box squats, all these things I can still work with. I can still bring up and address weak points with a regular straight barbell. This just adds that versatility. And that's where other barbells might not necessarily be able to address the same amount of uh, options and weaknesses that an SSB can address and fix. It's also very comfortable using the, that padded uh, yoke. Uh, I think that helps extend a little bit of training longevity just because you aren't having just hard steel on your back for the whole time. It does allow for a little bit more comfort during training if that's something that matters to you. So what the barbell also does is by leaving, alleviating some stress from the shoulder joint, just because we do have the pads, you'd have the shoulders in that, the arms in that forward position, the shoulders can stay in an almost internally rotated position, but you can still keep them in that externally rotated position, but you're not chicken winging out and adding some more stress to that shoulder joint. It helps you bench press and overhead press more. And I mean, it's in a roundabout way. I'm gonna throw this out, there is some evidence for it. Or is another case for the SSB bar. But if you're able to take out some shoulder pressure from not having to keep your shoulders in an uncomfortable position during the squat, 
and that allows you to train the bench press and the overhead press more without any shoulder pain, I think that's a great, I think that's another great win for the SSB. It's just another way to add some more training volume without adding uh, undue stress to the body. And you could say, oh, I could just switch over to a Swiss bar or a, a, a neutral grip bar or do some dumbbell presses. And yes, you could do that. But if we went out, that would require us to go out and A, buy a Swiss bar or B, buy a bunch of dumbbells. Whereas we could have just stopped the shoulder pain from happening in the first place by, by substituting out the regular squat for an SS yoke squat. And that shoulder discomfort wouldn't appear in the first place. And that would allow us to train the regular bench press a bit more often. Um, without having to worry about buying another barbell because if our shoulder issues are kind of stemming from the fact that we're keeping our shoulders in this position on the back squat that having a swiss bar is kind of putting a band-aid on the solution on addressing the root cause of where that shoulder discomfort is coming from um, i know that helped me a lot in the in the recent months and probably obviously the recent year but mainly in the recent months where i've had a bit of a bit more shoulder discomfort especially as i introduced a lot more back squatting and a lot more bench pressing when i started subbing out one of the back squat one of the squatting movements of the week for a squat with the SS yoke bar, I noticed that my shoulder discomfort went away over the course of a couple of weeks, uh, throwing some rest weeks there, and now my shoulder pain is pretty much gone. And I can bench press without any issues as well, and I think that's a great way. I didn't have to go out and get a neutral grip barbell or a diff another different specialty barbell to help me address my shoulder pressing and my bench pressing movements, which is a great way, another great way to look at it. If we can address the, the cause of a problem. We don't have to buy another thing to fix the problem that I laid upon that. So now what I'll do is I'll move on to five other specialty barbells that are quite popular and that I would recommend to a degree, but I think should come secondary to this first purchase of the SS Rook barbell. So namely the trap barbell comes to mind. Um, it is a great, it is a great specialty barbell I think a good accessory one I tend to not use mine as much just because I'm not the biggest fan of it um, especially since I got some farmer carry handles uh, the main thing I was using the hex barbell for was to do uh, weighted carries and to do some uh, trap deadlifts I wasn't the biggest fan of the trap deadlift uh, just personal preference nothing other than that I much prefer the regular deadlift with a barbell um, I just wasn't a big fan of that, the trap barbell movement, but if that's something you enjoy doing, then yes, it can help for that. But again, the trap barbell has the shortcomings of being very single use. I can mainly do deadlifts, weighted carries, and if I can get the balance right, probably an overhead press, but definitely not as versatile as the SS shirt bar. Again, not, again, the reason I'm suggesting the SS Yoke Bar is because of its versatility in the gym. It's not that it's better or worse than these barbells, it's just that it gives you more versatility so that you can access more workouts and more movements with only one piece of equipment. Next would be the Swiss Barbell with the angle grips or the multi-angle grips, however you want to look at it, the basic structure. You have regular barbell on the end, but then in the middle you can have different angles to put your hands in, ideally helping you keep a different grip angle and grip width to alleviate some shoulder issues. Again, the problem with that is it's very much limited to pressing move, pressing and pulling movements. You can't really adjust that to do any lower body movements. Again, another specific purpose for a specialty barbell. The Easy Curl Bar, the king of all arm movements, great for, I much prefer to use an Easy Barbell, an Easy Curl Barbell for a tricep extensions because it keeps those wrists in a bit more of a neutral position. Um, I also like it for uh, curls, but much prefer them for skull crushes. The curls are nice because it takes a little bit of that wrist pain away, but it does uh, lead to a slightly less uh, bicep activation because when the hands start curling in, you start adding in a bit more forearms as the hands supinate out more and in this hands up position, that's when you uh, activate a lot more biceps. So. Ironically, using the easy curl for a curl is less good for you because you're accessing less barbell, less bicep. But if it does alleviate that wrist pain, then that's great. But again, the easy curl barbell is really just there for curling and tricep extensions. Again, very specific use for one barbell. So you'd have to buy all these multiple barbells. Uh, the Cambridge barbell, probably one of the closest cut, like 
relatives to the SS yoke barber because you do have that camber on the barber, but we aren't having the handles. You could add this to the spider barbell, um, other variants of that type of barber where you have a camber down, a weight that just hangs out from the center of gravity from the top of the sleeves. Again, great barber for squatting, but because it doesn't have the versatility of the angle of the handles and the angle of the camber of the sleeves and it drops down a fair bit, you're very limited to what you can do. So another single specific purpose for a specialty barbell that would cost a lot of money. Move on to the Tsunami barbell, which is great for stability work, great for a lot of other dynamic movement work as well. You can start throwing in bands and weighted, kettle, weighted kettlebells or things hanging from the side. It allows you to really work on that stability for obviously whatever you can do with a straight barbell, you can do with a tsunami barbell. But again, I don't think it's as versatile as the SSB and it won't address as much uh, everyday weaknesses that the SS barbell can address. It's very much specific to working on that either explosiveness or stability under a moving load, whereas this can you can address a lot of different things other than just stability and uh, explosiveness. And then, and then finally, wrapping up with the log barbell. Really, that's a great it's a great strongman tool, of an awesome implement to have in your own gym if you can. Really changes the dynamics of an overhead press, shifting that center of gravity out, and having to work with the technique of pressing a log. But again, very specific use. I don't think I've ever seen anyone squat with a log bar. So there's that. Um, you can't really do much. You probably do a bench. I'm sure you could do bench pressing and curls with it. But again, not what it's meant for. Not really the type of movement that would suit the log barbell very well. So again, another specific use for another barbell that would cost a fair amount of money. So the trend that I'm kind of trying to throw at you is that for the amount of money that you're going to spend on a SS yoke bar and SSB, it allows you to do a lot more movements and unlock so many other exercises and movements and training styles that you can do in addition to a straight barbell. So between a straight barbell and an SSB barbell, you can do a lot of movements and a lot of exercises without having to buy a lot of too much other stuff other than more plates and weight plates. So I think dollar for, from like a movement to dollar perspective, secondary to a regular straight barbell, the SSB is probably the second highest movement to dollar barbell you can buy on the market today. You can do lower body, you can address weaknesses on the core, the lower back. Uh, it helps you if you have shoulder pain, you can do some upper body movements with it. It helps bring up, it helps address root causes of the problem if you're having shoulder issues due to the back squat. Um, you can do triceps, you can curl with it, you can do walking lunges with it, you can do so many other movements, which will be part of the third video that I'll put, produce, which is some exercises that you can do with the SSB, so you can have some, it helps you see how versatile this barbell actually is. And again, especially if you really focus on the big compound movements, you wanna build up a big squat, a big deadlift, and you're still benching and press and overhead pressing as well, I think this is a great barbell. And I, th and I really, really think this should be the first specialty barbell you buy. I would ignore all the other barbell options out there. Once you get that nice Rogo Higher Power Bar as your main barbell to use, I would recommend even getting this before getting a secondary beta barbell. I, I really like having a secondary beta barbell because it allows you to do two exercises uh, back to back. It allows you to giant set and superset. But if you'd only have two, I would say get a Roger Higher Power Bar and an Elite FTS SS Yoke Bar, and those two will get you through years and years of training. Um, you can upgrade, obviously, after that, but I think between those two, unlock so many options in the gym so you can train longer, um, stay more mentally engaged with your training. If you need variety to help with the training, it's a great way to add so much variety without having to add too much extra cost. And then once you get that, throw in uh, whatever other specialty barbell you get from there because between those two, once you get that third specialty barbell there, you're gonna have so many options and so many exercises that you won't be able to obviously do all of them. You have to pick a few favorites, but between those three, between these two barbells, you can, you can build a really strong level of strength and I think that's a great thing. And I think by not having to spend so much money, you can spend money 
and resources elsewhere. If you have limited space, you can only have space for two barbells. These are two barbells, I'd say. I wouldn't worry about any of the other training equipment out there. Just get these two, get a bench and a rack, and that's it. Bunch of weight plates. That's a great garage gym to pretty much do almost anything and become really strong. So check out the first video, which I'll link here, um, where I go over why I think the Elite FTS SSO bar is the best SSB on the market today. And then stay tuned for my third video of the series, where I go over all the different exercises that you can do with the SSB, hopefully with the Elite FTS SSO bar. This has been Selwyn from Winstrength, and remember, a better life through strength.